welcome again. Today, we will be pulling up, as always, the genetic matrix chart to look at what is alive right now in the cosmos. The sun is activating gate 47, gene key 47, hexagram 47, <laughs> archetype 47. We call it the alchemist, and it is a master transmuter. So the shadow frequency is oppression. And we move to transfiguration where you can completely change forms, you know, from metal to gold, from base metal, from whatever, from crap to gold <laughs> through the transmutation process. So today we're in a third line day, which is trial and error. Of course, we're approaching fourth line, but there have been, you know, many different ways of trying to turn your current circumstance into something else, or maybe falling down, getting up, whatever. Don't judge it. It's here for you. Maybe you're experiencing multiple different areas of oppression or feeling constricted or feeling something. But it says that the 47 oppression, a restrictive and adverse state as a result of internal weakness or external strength or both. This is the gate of realization. We see that 47 is in open ashna and we have this reflector chart. There's nothing that is constantly activated right now. None of the longer, none of the planet that takes longer time around the wheel that are activating any channels. So a lot of things filtering through and also this 47 being part of that open ash now with a lot of ideas, a lot of things to conceptualize uh, around. And it is to not be fixed right now. We have a lot of retrograde, so fixed movement forward is not going to happen. And kind of fixedly ho holding onto the pa past is not going to help either. The 47 together with the 64, it's part of the abstract circuitry, the sensing circuit. And it's looking back and making sense of things. What I want to mention about the moon, which is, what activates a lot for us kind of in our subjective experience on a daily basis. We have had the moon yesterday when we didn't meet. That was meeting up with Venus in Leo, where Juno was as well. So those feminine archetypes, Juno, the moon and Venus in leadership Leo, feeling into relationships, feeling into the heart, feeling into what makes the heart joyous, what makes the heart happy, what's valuable. Venus is the ruler of Taurus. And Taurus wants to have the things of high quality and the things that are worth something. So in relationships, what is it that allows you to have that joy, have that heart beat? The seven is saying it's only your inner guidance that can tell you that. And then as the moon is cruising on, we're seeing it makes these positive aspects to Aries, to the North Node and Chiron. So that's happening right now as we speak, asking us, okay, what is it that we are understanding, fourth jinky, mm -hmm. about the shocks or the wounds maybe even of the past, 51, so that we can say yes, 29, to new tra trajectory, 42. And it's all about that kind of initiation and taking initiative on something new, saying yes to something new. That's happening as the moon is moving. So I feel like these are interesting kind of personal subjective patterns or opportunities that are happening, even if we have all these retrogrades. It's like feeling into what's worth in relationship. What's, is it with the past that is ready to heal so that there can be something new coming out of it? And that being said, where the moon is continuing on, She's going to meet up. She's moving into Virgo and she's going to meet up with the sun. Maybe this Virgo season, you haven't really felt Virgo that much because usually we say it's not until the moon in that sign, the sun is in, the new moon, that we really feel the energy. And here we're going to have the new moon on the 14th of the month, just a week before basically the sun is moving on into Libra. So a very long time where Virgo kind of hasn't necessarily really started in that kind of everyday subjective emotional reality uh, with the moon. It's going to be a, per, a, a powerful new beginning for us in two days if we are taking the opportunity to feel into here, going into the sixth gate where the sun and the moon are going to meet on the 14th. What do you feel is, I mean, we're going to be in 47.5? So it's going to be a fifth line day. Is that correct? I uh, haven't checked the time. I don't, I don't uh, know if we're still in the 47 or if we're already starting going into the six. That energy, I mean, for you, Ash, it's going to be super powerful because basically right before your birthday, you're going to have this conjunction of the sun and the moon 
asking you for something new happening that is going to probably be, you know, see, yeah. Yeah. And 47 has always been a really big transit for me in the past years. Either somebody has passed away, my dog or a family member, or it was the time that we did ayahuasca. And this year is, or this year isn't any, any different, although I can feel it a little bit more There's nothing happening on the surface, but definitely things are happening underneath. And maybe as the moon approaches, it's like offering something different where there's not a lot of things for me to kind of transmute, sort through. It feels like there's like this completion or this decision happening here. And with the 47 being conjunct, the moon brings up these emotional waters too, things for us to reflect on. So this can be a moment where you're going to have these realizations or you're going to feel the immensity of the oppression so that you can move forward and start to to gain some understanding on it. This is the abstract circuitry. So we are not going to have an understanding if we are in the thick of it. It's afterwards that we're going to be able to extract the medicine. And maybe you're going to be in the thick of it now because what the 47 is delivering you is an opportunity for you to feel that oppression, to feel that thing. Or in this time, the 47 is offering you an opportunity to transmute the past because it's already over. You've already worked through it. And now you get this opportunity to see it from a different vantage point and see it with different eyes and be able to pull out and extract the medicine, which is, you know, what we're doing in that alchemical process as well. How are we refining things? How are we allowing things to quicken? How are we dissolving things? How are we turning things into gold? Even the hardest moments, how has it served you? So I'm not sure what will come up for each person individually, but it is definitely a, an opportunity to really sink your teeth into what's happening. I can't wait until tomorrow. I need to know right now. So here we see. You're responding in the moment. I'm like, can we, what is the chart? You're like, oh, curiosity. Okay, here it is. So here it is. So right now we said that the moon just went into 29 here on the cusp between Leo and Virgo. And mm. she is moving on and in the evening, on the 14th and in the ninth, if you're in Europe, that's where we're gonna have the conjunction. And there are other planets too that you can see with these lines where it's like communicating to, for example, Jupiter, for example, um, Neptune. What are the um, blue lines? Is that a so positive? blue lines are, har- it's harmony. So these are trines mm. that uh, there is a harmonious communication. We have an earth sign and an earth sign. It's harmonious. Oh. Then when we're looking at, for example, the opposition, a little bit more like almost the opposition to Neptune. That's more of a tension. Could be a creative tension or it could be like kind of the polarities of something. And we don't really have any squares that squares is like when it's 90 degrees, that would be more of a creative tension. And, you know, different when we have the square, it's going to be in signs or elements that are very different to each other. That's why we have that tension. Right. Oh my. So allow yourself the opportunity, afford yourself the opportunity to look back, look forward. Don't spend an an extraordinary amount of time ruminating in the past. The 47 can offer you insights, but as you're moving into the full, the new moon, it's going to be the sixth line, which is looking forward into gate six, conflict, diplomacy, peace. Whenever we hit a six line day, it's looking forward. The pinnacle is the fifth line. Sixth line, you're starting to have gratitude, wrap things up, move and and look forward into where you're going. So here we're looking forward into the sixth and seeing where's that diplomacy? Where is that peace? Where might there be conflict? And allowing yourself to look forward to that. (laughs) Yeah, and we really want to invite you to tomorrow because we're doing our monthly new season. So we're going from... Virgo season to Libra season in a little bit more than a week and you learn like we, you learn foundational astrology because we go through the sign the corresponding house which is the seventh house and then we go through the ruler planets every time so if you are with us for a year you get the bundle for 196 or something like that then you will have every like all the nine planets and a little bit of Chiron and extra stuff that we're throwing in there you will have the 12 signs you will have the 12 houses 
And it's going to be the way that we weave every day here. It's going to be not rocket science for you. You're going to be like, yeah, because that's that element. Yeah. Oh, that's the quality. That's mutable. Okay, that's cardinal. Like all the words that we're using just for being with us, whether you're with us every month or you kind of get it and just learn it because of you, you want to understand it. The good thing with doing it every month with us is that we create a roadmap. So you will have a mantra that you're filling in with your own activations. You will have initiatives that you can do during the month. It's really using that energy of the sun, which we know in the Trina stream, the sun and the earth are activating 70% of everything that's moving through us. So by actually allowing the sun to be that for us and tuning into that energy, even when we have all this, these retrogrades, we can find like a constructive way of working with what's alive in, in the sky. I hope to see you tomorrow as we do the setup. We won't be coming live at this time tomorrow because we're actually going to be teaching during this time tomorrow. So we'll see. We might pop in for a little bit. I'm not sure. But if you do want to see more of us and get into the astro astrological impact that Libra has on you in particular, we go into what is Libra in general and then what is Libra seventh house Venus for you and look at your personal chart. So you might want to come and join us for that. And if so, reach out or find that link and we can see you tomorrow. And also, if we don't see you tomorrow with the transits, whenever we come on, that's going to be five hours exactly. When we come on Thursday, that's five, five hours before the new moon. So we'll still give you some tricks and tips of how to tune into the new moon. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today and have a good rest of your day, evening, morning. Bye. Bye.